Hello, this is uh, Kevin O'Brien and Brian Beeler, and today uh, we're going to be showing you how to update a Dell PowerEdge R640 using the uh, iDRAC controller. So we've logged in and we're looking at, uh, this is version 9 through a Dell PowerEdge R640. And we actually showed that in, off in a video the other day where we're filling it up with a bunch of SK Hynix, Flash, NVMe, and SATA drives. So that's pretty exciting. But before we get going with that testing, we want to make sure the system is updated with all of its key components. Yeah, so right now we have uh, BIOS version 2.3.10 and iDRAC firmware version 3.36.36.36. And a little birdie has told us that uh, there is a, a new iDRAC firmware drop available. It hasn't been fully released yet, but it's uh, out to uh, grab. So we're going to see what it looks like. So there are a number of ways to upgrade these components, Kevin. What do you? Which one do you want to use? Uh, we're going to go through uh, the um, lifecycle controller. So let's pop open the uh, virtual console. And th there are a couple of other ways to uh, update uh, firmware and uh, files on the uh, server. This one's the most user-friendly. But if you're updating a lot of these in a uh, huge batch or uh, trying to get a, a very specific firmware rev, um, though there are different uh, methods to uh, approach this. Now we're going to select the lifecycle controller as the uh, boot option and then click yes. Uh, and now we'll uh, power on the server which will uh, load up the uh, lifecycle controller in a couple of minutes. So the lifecycle controller uh, is part of the iDRAC component on the motherboard or it's a little clip-on guy on the motherboard, right, for these yeah. systems? So it's a dedicated hardware element that uh, Dell has had uh, for a countless number of generations now. Um, I still remember it on our uh, old PowerEdge 2970. Oh, gosh. And the cool thing with the iDRAC controller uh, and Lifecycle controller is... Um, Certain uh, server vendors have been segmenting, uh, doing paywalls in front of their uh, BIOSes and other updates. And right now, um, you don't even have to have the enterprise. Uh, you'd have to have the enterprise license to uh, load the KVM, but you could plug in a keyboard and uh, mouse and screen into a notebook or uh, server locally, and uh, be able to update the firmware on any system well past the. Um, uh, I suppose the best buy date or uh, the support contract mm -hmm. and it, it makes it friendly for home labbers down the road or even uh, companies that um, might have a uh, warranty for the first year and just didn't want uh, a uh, existing software hardware contract going out into the three or five year span. Well, I mean, we've seen the longevity of these powered systems go well beyond the three to five year typical usage windows because if you think back, this is a 640, but how many 710s and, and 720s and 620s do we still see running around out there in the wild? There's quite a few of them. Yeah, and it's also important to note that uh, as a lot of companies look towards their uh, disaster recovery plans, usually it's a... I mean, you're not going to be having mirrored environments on both sides, well, mirrored data, but you're generally going to be moving your older equipment off onto the replication site where if your main thing burns down. You know your old hardware worked. It might not be as efficient, might not run as, as powerful, but it's still functional. So a lot of these guys will put their old equipment in a uh, replication site or disaster recovery site and uh, keep on cranking with that. All right, so we'll let this thing boot up and then pick up with the, uh, the next steps. Okay, so here we've landed inside the uh, lifecycle controller, and it has a lot of other functionality, but uh, for the purposes of this little uh, video, we're going to just cover the uh, firmware updates. Now to uh, check for uh, firmware updates, now this is also assuming that uh, the server has already been set up with uh, the uh, specific network configurations for your environment. Uh, those would be configured through uh, settings, and in this case we have uh, one of our NICs uh, just getting a DHCP IP address in our, uh, one of our VLANs. So we'll go, uh, go ahead and click on uh, get the latest firmware. And then uh, I'll select FTP server. And then the uh, the latest uh, releases are uh, kept in a uh, server just uh, that's accessible by uh, the address ftp.dell.com. 
And then this uh, stage uh, will compare your system configuration against what's available out in their uh, uh, firmware repository. And um, in a couple of minutes, uh, sometimes it could be a couple of seconds, other times it might be five or ten minutes, depending on the amount of hardware in your system, it'll come back with a list that shows you what's installed, what are the uh, current firmware or uh, driver versions installed, and then what is available to uh, download. Okay, we'll just let this spin. What's going to happen next? It'll be on a scroll list. We can select, do you want to do things, etc. Are we just going to want to pick them all? Yeah, you know, everything that's, uh, I'll mention it, but everything that is available to update will be selected. It'll be selected already? Oh, okay. okay. All you'll have to do is... Right, wait, just give it a couple seconds of quiet. Okay, so the uh, scan finished, and uh, now we have a uh, list showing all the available devices that can be updated, and items that have available updates uh, are uh, pre-selected. Now, this interface isn't the fastest, but it doesn't really have to be. It just has to work. So as you're going through this, don't expect it to be at lightning speed or anything. Uh, but in this case, we have an update to our uh, internal RAID card, uh, one of the OS driver packs, uh, the uh, backplane for uh, the SATA and SAS bays, uh, IDRAC uh, going from uh, 3.36.36.36 to 4. Shiny, brand new shiny 4.0. Yeah, and uh, the BIOS from uh, 2.3.10 to uh, 2.4.8. And now all you have to do is click apply, and it will download the files and uh, validate them and install them one by one. And during this process, it does take quite a while and uh, the system will restart and when it finishes, it will be back at the uh, first landing page of uh, Lifecycle Controller. But after that, you just click exit and go, uh, go about back to your uh, existing operating system or your fresh install. So we'll let these updates take place, let the server do its thing and then rejoin at that point and take a look at uh, at what we've got updated. Okay, so after about 20 or 30 minutes, the update and upgrade process uh, completed. And part of that uh, IDRAC uh, gets uh, restarted, so you have to uh, go back to the web page and refresh it to log back in again. But um, we can see there are a couple of changes. Uh, the interface looks a little bit cleaner. Uh, we have the uh, task summary on the uh, right side that uh, is brought kind of in front of you where it wasn't there before. And as you can notice, the BIOS version is um, at uh, 2.4.8 uh, upgraded, and uh, IDRAC firmware version is 4.0.0.0. Um, beyond that, uh, you go back into the virtual console, and from here, this is where we can exit out of the, the virtual console and uh, resume our regular programming. So here we click yes, and after this, the uh, system will automatically reboot and either load into the uh, existing OS that was already installed or uh, give you an opportunity to uh, install a uh, fresh environment. And we'll be back with a deep dive on what's new in iDRAC 4 and uh, the related updates and enhancements there. And for now, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can keep in touch with what we're doing at Storage Review. Uh, the more the merrier. Thanks again, and we'll be back soon with a new video.